Hello grandchildren, it's February 25th at the moment and I haven't made a journal entry in a bit of time because I went back to California and I wanted to see my family and not spend any time doing any work or making videos or anything like that so I I've pretty much just been lazy and hanging out with people for the past couple months. My life's been crazy, I'm back in Australia and I'm going to school again so that's pretty awesome. As you probably noticed the background's a little bit different because I'm actually living with Sean at the moment who's a person from my film school and I didn't want to pay rent when I went back to California because that seems stupid to pay a couple hundred dollars every week for a room that I'm not living in so I just gave up my apartment he let me keep my stuff here and when I got back he let me stay here and now I think I might be moving in so yeah that's exciting. Anyway, as far as stories are concerned, my life has just been absolutely insane for the past couple months. First of all, I got to see my girlfriend Skylar and I, I haven't seen her in like five or six months and it was just so difficult, but then I got to see her pretty much like every day of being back and that was just incredible. Um, and we had our two year anniversary and we went out to dinner and that was great and it's just mind blowing that we've been together for two years because one of my first journal entries that I made that, uh, for, for you guys was actually me talking about asking her out. And now we've been together for over two years and that's the longest relationship that I've been in up to this point and it's just been fantastic regardless of the fact that I'm on the other side of the world and I don't know how I got lucky enough to find someone that fits me this well. Anyway, that's boring relationship bullshit. I want to tell you about something exciting, like the fact that I broke into an abandoned nuclear power plant with Logan, and that was cool. I did drive through a ton of snow for the first time uh, it, over the break, and that was kind of terrifying and awesome. Logan's hard drive uh, failed over the break. It was like rapidly losing all of the data, so I had to recover all of his stuff and move it to a new hard drive to save his laptop. And then he went back to school, and there was something else wrong that I think I screwed up on his computer when I was trying to fix all that stuff. And he called me from Eugene, which is five hours north of Reading, and said, hey, my uh, laptop's not working. Uh, can you help tell me how to fix it? And I couldn't tell him how to fix it because it was kind of complicated and uh, I couldn't see the laptop in front of me so then I was like ah oh, maybe I'll just drive over and he was like no it's snowing and storming and stuff and you're gonna die if you come do it and I said but that's exciting and then I went to go help him fix his computer so after about an hour of driving north the road was actually closed because there was too much snow and there was like chain requirements and I had chains in the back of my car which I don't know if chains are a thing or if you know what chains are but it's pretty much like when you're driving in snow the tires aren't good enough to just grip the ground in the road and uh, because of the snow it just slips everywhere so you can actually literally put chains around the tires that'll uh, the metal will grip the road a little bit better so I pulled off in a parking lot and put on chains for the first time in my life and it took like 45 minutes for me to figure out how to do it and uh, but I did it and then I turned out the road was actually completely closed there was no traffic allowed to go north on the interstate at all of any type of car even if you had chains or snow tires but I had gotten that far and I didn't want to give up so I went on this sketchy little like dirt road in the middle of nowhere and then hooked on to this other highway that went out through the middle of nowhere and it, uh, I drove the rest of the way Eugene and it was terrifying. Uh, there was so much snow. There was points where on the side of the road there was like five or six feet of snow. You couldn't even get off at the exits of this highway because the exits weren't plowed and just had that high of snow. So you're stuck on the highway going through the middle of nowhere without any gas stations until you get to somewhere that there's no snow anymore. I ended up getting to Eugene at like 2 or 3 in the morning and it was just a really long drive and I learned a lot about driving in the snow and it's... So during this break actually a huge storm system had come through California and through the rest of the United States which is why it was snowing so much and I ended up having to drive really long distances two other times but every time I thought I might die when I do this. I went to Reno which is in like Nevada because I was gonna spend time with Amy and April because that's where they're going to college and after I stayed there I, I was gonna go drive seven hours up to Eugene to see Logan again. And with my luck, my phone ended up dying the night before I was going to go because of a manufacturing defect. It always kind of annoyed me how adults and older people always told you just an obscene amount of directions on how to get to a place. Uh, when you, They could just tell you the address and you could put it into your phone and it would tell you how to get there. You don't need directions when you have a smartphone. You just you give me the address and I'll drive there and I don't need to listen to you talk for like 20 minutes on which turn it is after the supermarket to get to your house. But all of a sudden when my phone had died, I realized why they did that. Cell phones are kind of a recent thing. I was born in 1996 and the, the, the world didn't have cell phones back then. Uh, and now in 2017, of course, everybody has a smartphone. It's, uh, you, you can't live life without a smartphone. All of the adults and grandparents when I was growing up didn't have that when they grew up. So they had to live life 
telling each other how to get places or using an actual map, but you can't really do that while you're driving. So instead of what should have been a pretty relaxed seven hour drive of me just waiting for my phone to tell me, turn in one mile, and then I would turn, uh, I now had to figure out how am I gonna get to Eugene without someone telling me what to do. I need, I need a robot voice to tell me which way to turn. So I got my laptop the night before I left and I just wrote down on a piece of paper what the directions said online. Uh, and the next day I went driving and what do you know, there was just nothing but snow the entire drive and it was just terrifying. The car was like slipping a little bit. It was, it was just so much snow. It's, it's hard to get across how much snow there was. You couldn't see anything else but snow. Uh, it, it's literally, you can't even see the road, besides the fact that the snow kind of dips down a little bit where the road is supposed to be. That's how much snow there was driving there. Went to this gas station to get filled up, and I walked in and asked the guy uh, where I was right then. And uh, he told me where I was, and then he asked where I was trying to be. And I said, Eugene. And then he laughed and said, well, that's not where you are right now. I was really concerned that I bought a road map, and he pointed to where we were, and then he pointed to Eugene, which was on the other side of the map. I had already been driving the seven hours that I needed to drive to get to Eugene, and he said that I was about five hours away from Eugene on the map. And uh, I don't have a cell phone, so I can't call Logan to let him know that I'm not dead and I'm actually just really lost and confused because I'm an idiot who doesn't know how to write down directions properly or something. Anyway, one last story before I go. When I was coming back to Australia, uh, I was planning on going from Sacramento to Los Angeles to Fiji to Sydney and everything was going to be all good and dandy. But I got to Sacramento and uh, I gave them my bags and I was sitting there and I was about an hour early for the flight and then that hour passed by and the plane wasn't there and they said there was a delay. Pretty soon it had been five hours of waiting for the plane at the Sacramento airport and then I, I went up and I asked them about it if there was anything that I needed to do to double check that I would make my connections and everything and then they said, oh no, you were actually supposed to go on the other plane but we didn't tell you. Uh, so yeah, this is confusing. And then I asked if there was anything weird with my bags and they said, nah, it should be fine when you get to Los Angeles, uh, just tell them uh, what happened and they'll sort out the baggage situation from the stuff that's underneath the plane. Anyway, eventually the plane got there, we flew to LA and everything was fine, but I got off the plane in LA and the first thing that happened when I got off the plane was this old black woman from LA with a really like city accent ran up to me screaming for, for Austin, Austin, Austin. I said, uh, yeah, I'm Austin. And then she said, we gotta go. You're gonna miss your flight. It's in five minutes. A shuttle that would take us to the, the international terminal. And we just like caught it last minute. And she's like, Greg, 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 stop. And he stopped the bus and we jumped on. And then she handed me the orange paper once we sat down. And it was like an emergency switch ticket because I had missed my last connection uh, to go from Los Angeles to Fiji and then to Sydney and uh, they said she said that they had put me onto this flight that would go straight from Los Angeles to Sydney. Uh, everyone seemed to immediately make way from us, including like security and employees. And I'm assuming that's because the orange paper that she was holding and that I was holding meant that we didn't have time for any bullshit and everyone should clear out of the way. I was driving really fast and then we came out of the international terminal and we just ran in, got us to just bypass security completely. And then we were just sprinting down the terminal that had like thousands of people and like jumping around people and everything. We barely made it to the plane in time and then I hugged her and said, thank you. And then I asked them about my bags and they said, no, everything was fine. And then I got on the plane and sat next to these two people and uh, we flew to Sydney straight there, which is like a ridiculous flight. It was like 15 hours or something like that. And I got into the Sydney airport and uh, none of my bags had come out of the plane. They looked it up on the computer and they said that the last place that my bags had been seen was Los Angeles and that they weren't here. Uh, so I, th I thought that was kind of weird, but maybe there was just a weird confusion with the flights and that it had come on a different plane, like the one I was originally supposed to go on. So uh, I filed a little claim report that pretty much said that when they got it, they would call me or email me or something. And then I left. I made a phone call to American Airlines because I hadn't heard anything about my bags and they said that I would get an email like within the same day and it had now been like three or four days. Uh, and they said that they didn't have anything on file for me and the guy got really angry and then started finding this other baggage claim report thing for them to try to find out what had happened to it. And he said that they would send out a team to go look for it and stuff and that I would get an email and I did get an email, but then every day I checked it for two weeks and I never heard anything about the bag. There was no update. Like three days ago, I got an email that said, oh, hey, uh, 
I'm Bob from this place, and I'm in this warehouse, and I noticed that there was this bag here, and uh, I think it might be yours. And I was like, yeah, is there a combination lock on it that has this code? And then he's like, yep, this is yours. I'll send it off to Sydney for you. And I was like, okay, I guess I've just been emotionally crushed for a couple of weeks, and now everything's fine again. So that's neat. But yeah, anyway, now, um, I'm sorry I didn't make any journal entries for the past couple of months just because I wanted to spend time with people and, yeah, now I'm going back to school and stressing out about film stuff and I have all my stuff back and I'm living with Sean now, I guess, and life is pretty cool, I guess. I mean, it sucks that I'm on the other side of the world from, like, my family and Skylar and everything like that, but, you know, what are you going to do? Yeah. Anyway, um, that's it. Sorry, I haven't talked in a while to you guys. I never, I never think about these before I film, and I should. Uh, if you guys see me anytime in the near future, we should, we should build, uh, play with Legos. Have I said that one before? I, I don't even have these written down, so I don't know if this is a repeat, but we could do something twice if I say it twice. We should play with Legos and build shit, because that's exciting. Or actually, there's these things called magnetiles that I discovered when I was at Skylar's house. Uh, over the break, and they're just, they're, they're really cool, actually, because they're just magnet plastic things to stick together. They're, they're for toddlers, but they're incredible, and you can build towers with them, and I think that we should find those somehow, or build them or something. If we can't find those, I guess we just do Legos, but we should build with something and make a tower of some sort. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go. I'll see you guys in the next entry.